today's speaker is Mr. Justin Cooper. And Mr. Cooper is the director of technology or uh, technology director for Blockchain 901. Blockchain 901 is a technology nonprofit and its mission is to promote the adoption of blockchain and emerging technologies, um, you know, not just through education, but also um, collaborating with different uh, uh, organizations and just different networking opportunities. So that's really exciting and a really great mission statement, very innovative from the times that we're in. Um, Mr. Cooper, uh, who comes to us with over 30 years of experience in um, IT solutions, he's an IT solutions developer, and integrator. He's also a certified blockchain solution architect. It's interesting because I remember during one of our previous sessions, one of the uh, participants, one of you all asked about what a blockchain architect was. Um, so he, I'm sure he, if you have that question still, he could probably tell you more about that. But he's also a certified blockchain consultant and is the founder of Omni Onyx. Is that correct, Mr. Um, Cooper, Omni Onyx? That is correct. Okay, Inc., and it's a blockchain, blockchain solution uh, consulting and development company. So he um, is also the Memphis Charter Chair of BUILT, which is a really cool acronym, which stands for Blacks United in Leading Technology. I love that. It's BUILT International. And um, he's also been involved in blockchain and crypto since 2014. So without further ado, I am happy to welcome um, Mr. Cooper. Mr. Cooper, we'll, we'll turn it over to you now. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, your time, everyone. Uh, I'd like to give you a quick high-level overview of uh, NFTs, where it's going in the future, the tokenization opportunities that it represents, uh, not just for this project, but for all avenues, all ventures, all current studies going forward in the future and have a nice little QA session where uh, we can get in the weeds if you would like to. If not, keep it high level. I'm fine with that as well. Just to recap, again, uh, Justin Cooper, Director of Technology for Blockchain 901, uh, also president for the Memphis chapter of Built International. Uh, do have a small but budding uh, blockchain development company uh, and consulting company uh, called Omnionics. I'm glad you got that. Uh, was actually established in 2008 as a general IT solutions provider, but uh, over the last four years has become specialized just in, in blockchain developments. Uh, I am a certified blockchain consultant, uh, certified blockchain solution architect, and a certified, as of two days ago, blockchain project manager. So today we're going to cover background of blockchain smart contracts and tokenization, so what tokenized assets are and how they work, the impact of being the past, current, and future state how it will apply to you, what it means to you potentially, uh, again, outside of this, this project in particular, uh, more as an overall holistic to the technology and its opportunities in the future. And then to let everybody's brain stop melting, we'll do a Q&A session at the end. So non-fungible tokens. NFTs create the opportunity for business models that didn't exist uh, creators can attach stipulations to NFTs that ensure that they get some of their proceeds every time an NFT, whatever that NFT is, uh, is sold, resold, perpetually, ensuring that it, it increases in value and the return on investment, the royalties, anything that is owed due to them is automatically processed in a trustless way to uh, ensure payment. Uh, this has the potential to completely transform markets like uh, property and vehicles. Transactions recorded on the blockchain are reliable and the information cannot be changed. So, as opposed to current business practices, depending on the industry, there are some tendencies there for people to be taken advantage of by uh, the current contracts, the contract structure, different rates. Blockchain and NFTs eliminate that in a trustless way but not only by having complete visibility to the process, the automation of the smart contract itself, 
and a hands-off approach to the, the actual transaction, meaning there's no intermediaries and nobody touching your money or interfering with your product, whatever that may be for distribution. A smart contracts can also be used in place of lawyers and escrow accounts to automatically ensure that the money and assets change hands and both parties honor their agreements. And if these cover assets, uh, I'm sorry, convert assets into tokens so they can move around within the system on the blockchain. So wallet to wallet, exchange to exchange, peer to peer transactions, no problem. Uh, the potential of NFTs goes much further because they completely change the rules of ownership. Transactions in which uh, ownership of something changes hands usually depends on layers of middlemen to establish trust, transactions, exchange contracts, and ensure that the money changes hands. And of course, in that process, those middlemen want to cut. Token types. We've talked about uh, NFTs and NFT being a non-fungible token. Well, what's what does fungible mean? What's the difference between a fungible token and a non-fungible token? So uh, an ERC-20, uh, and we're, we're using the Ethereum platform for this example. However, there are a multitude of chains now, uh, all of, most of them supporting the same protocol. Almost most of them, again, also supporting different types of NFTs and tokenization, be that as a fungible or a non-fungible token. Fungible token, uh, fungible token is something like a, a dollar or a penny or a coin, something that has a duplicate mirror, uh, something that's not distinctly unique by any means, and therefore can be replaced with another or exchanged with another with no impact to the holder or the bearer. Some examples would be dollars, cash, uh, coins, old and precious metals, or by the ounce, uh, stocks and bonds, and commodities. Non-fungible tokens are recognized as being unique, either by their traits, their property, their metadata, content. Uh, they're not identical, and that's what gives them their value and their uniqueness. So once something, if something were ever to possibly be duplicated, uh, an NFT was uh, duplicated, it would no longer be an NFT. It would be an ERC-20 with a very limited uh, pairing. So examples of that would be part, uh, your driver's license, personal identification card, uh, property ownership documents, and real estate. Uh, the distinct construction of each NFT has the potential for multiple use cases. What we're seeing now is uh, the more popular craze in the way that a lot of people got introduced into NFTs are through things like crypto kitties or individual artist pieces that sold for ludicrous amounts of money recently in the open market. Uh, some of them going for millions, some of them going for tens of millions of uh, in unparalleled, never before seen spending on collect. A lot of that came through as people just buying GIFs or uh, JPEGs, anything that anyone else may have on the internet. Why would they pay that, that much? It's art, the value is decided by the owner and how much the owner is willing to pay for it. That tends to start a trend, um, tends to make the artist very popular and demand goes up Supply, of course, is limited with these items being tokenized, increasing the value. So in the last two months, and I do apologize that I don't have the actual figure in there, but we are currently looking at $68.5 million worth of NFTs has been purchased on the open markets. So from Wall Street to Main Street, enterprises, industries, entrepreneurs, fiduciaries, collectors, musicians, fans, gamers, and even parents who scream at their kids to get off their dang computer and go outside, the desire for NFTs and their benefits has become invaluable. So as we said, this is spanning all industries now, including gaming. So use that one particularly because I, I think most of us at some point have heard your parents 
screaming at you to get off the machine and go outside. You'll never earn a living playing that game. Little did they know, 2021, that is absolutely untrue. Uh, in a very short time, the unique immutable properties of, NF of applications and NFTs have become recognized as the ideal medium for collectors, collectibles, ownership records, validation and verification oracles, legal contracts, stores of value, investments, rewards, incentives, even the monetization and ownership of purely digital gaming items and the real world value. NFTs can remove intermediaries, simplify, transist, uh, simplify transactions, create new markets, or expand existing markets. So, uh, so again, some use cases, case examples being marketing, um, sorry, being gaming, uh, digitization of any type of individualized record, like your ID, your home ownership, uh, property deed, uh, something that's applicable to you guys right now, your vaccination records. Actually, a lot of concern and controversy going on about actually validating the little handwritten cards that everyone has for vaccinations right now. Super important. Blockchain and NFTs can be, if approved, uh, a viable and applicable solution for validating and verifying uh, true proof of vaccination. More use case examples. Uh, NFTs can give musicians the potential to provide enhanced media and special perks to their fans. Plus, their fans would have the knowledge that there's no issue with copyright. They're not getting a bootleg or a, a copy of a copy or anything that's other anything other than what they're actually paying for from the original artist. Because the blockchain ensures that, that ownership is verified and authentic. Some media creators intent are producers that uh i'm sorry and producers can tokenize their content uh, can be hosted on a secure or decentralized medium and the access to that can be given or issued or sold as an nft ticket uh, the holder in that wallet accessing that website or accessing that content the wallet would be checked to ensure that they do have uh, one of those nfts that gives them access to that content any of the royalties that were supposed to be paid for us and staff, uh, supporters, investors would be done automatically as those tickets are purchased, as they're sold, sold again. The smart contracts would manage the distribution of funds appropriately as defined and that everybody got paid when they were supposed to immediately on every sale or every transaction where they were supposed to receive revenue. Employment contracts, uh, an example is football teams have been using a similar contractual type to sell or trade their players to other teams for quite some time now. Uh, and it's a rather intense practice in the, the research that goes into it and the tracking of the statistics, uh, actual value or perceived value of the player to each team. and against the team that it's being created from. Uh, blockchain also and NFTs as a contract could also eliminate that. Uh, with collectibles, uh, keeping on the sports theme, it is football season. With sports memorabilia, between 20 and, uh, sorry, between 50 and 80% of items are thought to be fake. Uh, this is very much true. Putting these items in NFTs with clear transaction histories back to creator uh, could overcome the counterfeiting issue. It can ensure the authenticity of the items, thus ensuring its value both to you as the purchaser or as the seller. Uh, for property claims, uh, same thing. 30% uh, of the global population is, is only 30% of the population globally is legally registered to the rights of their own land. Uh, those that don't have it can often get caught up in illegalities, probate as things are passed on, or even trying to obtain finance or take a loan out against what you own. Uh, the proof would need to be there in more concrete records and more easily traceable and identifiable as authentic records than 
what is currently available in a lot of places. Uh, gaming for organized blockchain assets, everything that you've played, every coin that you collected in Mario Brothers, every sword, every gift that you've created or collected in Minecraft, whatever your game of preference is now, there are or soon will be blockchain enabled versions of that. Those, the underlying value of backing the token has real world value. So those items now have value, not just in the game world where they can be traded or sold or exchanged for whatever you want, you set the value, but the underlying asset of those tokens can also be put on an exchange, cashed out for cash, traded, collected. Uh, other ones that are similar could be liquidated, burned or destroyed, increasing the rarity of the digital item that you have or the NFT that you have that represents that item increasing the value and in retail uh, more our lives are spent in virtual worlds the things that we'll buy will probably be bought and sold as in so the the receipt the proof of ownership of anything that you bought be it a dress be it a couch be it a car more than likely at some point in the not too distant future uh, because of the security and the authenticity and verification of NFTs on the blockchain, this is ultimately going to be status quo, in my opinion. Okay, now, NFT can, can be anything digital, uh, but a lot of the current excitement around using tech is to sell digital art. And that, that's been for about the last year. There is a dynamic shift change occurring now where Decentralized finance is using NFTs to actually stake uh, or encode the value of your assets into those NFTs as well. We've talked about uh, intellectual property rights and ownership as an NFT. Uh, certificates, your forthcoming uh, graduate diplomas, anything that means something can be converted to a digital version or a digital twin, stored on the blockchain as the original or a copy of the original file, or for ease of trading, maneuvering, uh, even validation or proof of ownership, tokenizing it as an NFT has profound benefits and very costly benefits of that compared to a lawyer or another third party maintaining or even validating those documents. So what NFTs mean to creators, um, and that's this is probably the largest emerging market that we're seeing now. Of course, uh, feeding off of art originally, more and more film producers are now adopting uh, blockchain stored movies, using NFTs as the access to those movies, media clips, content. Uh, even YouTubers, social media influencers, any of the content that they own or produce, they're finding inherent value in keeping access to it controlled by NFTs. Not just controlling who actually has access to it and also ensuring that they are receiving the proper royalties for use of that content, as opposed to it just being copied and included in someone else's work or republished on YouTube or another social media site somewhere else with no credit actually going to the original content owner or uh, uh, for those type of producers, this avenue almost lets you be your own Netflix, uh, depending on how and the mediums that you choose to store and broadcast it that creation, uh, there's nothing stopping anyone from that's watching this right now from literally being their own decentralized streaming media service. Pulling not just the content and the excess, ensuring that they've cut out the middleman completely and are receiving the maximum amount of money uh, in return for access to that content that they should be getting. All right, 
So tokenization of assets, everything from your car to media, particularly again for uh, creatives among us, programmers, game designers, artists, fashion designers, uh, tokenization and encoding things on the blockchain absolutely become greatest economic tools and economic empowering tools for individuals that we've seen today. Uh, that may change, there may be better technology coming out at some point in the future, but as it stands right now, uh, tokenization, encoding on the blockchain and use of NFTs has empowered individuals to truly become the owners of their own intellectual property, masters of their own financial fate and destiny through social media and proof of ownership and controlled access. The powers has been converted or conveyed from the usual giants in the sphere to the actual intellectual property creator. The adoption, the adoption is happening. We're, we're living it now. Consider yourselves even being here and listening to this as an early adopter. Those that aren't aware of this are going to be in a pretty compromising situation five, 10 years down the road. People that have profited most from this industry and from tokenization aren't artists, they're not creators, they're not film producers, musicians, authors, fashion designers. They're simply the people that created the marketplaces for these transactions to happen. So a place like Open Seas, which is uh, currently still holds the, the title of world's largest uh, NFT marketplace, only been around for three years. Uh, here they made a lot, a lot of money and that's yeah. been continuing to grow uh ever since and their their competition did start uh, very much like ebay you know there wasn't that they were selling a product or even offering the service they were providing the channel or the medium for people that did want to conduct those transactions to actually do it and take a small fee or commission hi thank you very much this is really fascinating um how do you go about um tokenizing um, your know, assets, or if you're interested even in creating a marketplace, is that something like anybody can do, or um, do you have to be like really, you know, big and involved in order to do those things? How do you get started in this? This is, has like countless applications I can think of off the top of my head. So there are a lot of ways to to get involved or to get started, uh, depending on what your personal passions are and your level of involvement uh, that you actually want. You don't have to be a coder. You don't have to be a, a lifelong blockchain or crypto enthusiast. Several businesses were started by people who recognized the inherent value of just providing a marketplace and hiring a developer to create a, a turnkey product for them. That being said, um, programming on a whole, as a whole, has really changed uh, over the last couple of decades where it's not quite as code as code intensive as it used to be. There are a lot of no to low code solutions that are available as uh, different industries are also helping promote the adoption of blockchain. A lot of them are releasing pre-made kits, uh, software developer kits, applications uh, for free usage to promote integration with their product and increasing in environmental awareness of, and adoption of the platform itself, uh, ultimately they will profit greatly. Does that answer your question? Well, the, uh, partially. The other part is if, say, I was a creator and I wanted to tokenize my assets and get on one of these marketplaces or something, is that a um, low barrier to entry kind of thing or do I need to really kind of commit like this is how I'm going to you know get in the game very uh, very low barrier to, en to entry uh, depending on the, the type of artist and medium that you use uh, more than likely if you're um, if you're already on the, a digital platform if you're a digital artist already you're already set if you're a physical medium artist 
the only real requirement would either be um, a scanner to digitize your art or access to a place that has a scanner to digitize your art. From that point, most of the marketplaces that specialize in conducting these transactions, all they need is the digital file. You can actually tokenize your item or art uh, on their platform. It's not something in so probably 60 to 70% of the marketplaces that you have to come prepared with NFT already and then list. They're, they've recognized that that has been a barrier to entry for a lot of people and have actually integrated that into their systems now. So the question was, are NFTs only made on Ethereum blockchain? No, they're not. There are numerous blockchains now. Of Ethereum is one of them still one of the more popular, but a, a handful that were actually built around uh, using NFTs as a DeFi protocol. Uh, they have different inherent properties than Ethereum, so it's actually faster, easier, and cheaper uh, to build, sell, do any of the, the processes that need to be done for your NFT on those platforms. Ethereum at this point is one of several. Yeah, so I got a question for Mr. Cooper. So we already know that majority of the NFTs are being held on the Ethereum network. And um, we know the Ethereum network is being expensive for the gas fee and all that. So I was wondering if we, and we have like new um, networks such as the Solana and um, ADA, Cardano, and um, even Ripple just announced the other day they have a fund for NFT. So I was wondering, a question to Mr. Cooper, um, do you think that majority of the NFT uh, marketplace will like move and shift to like to the other um, blockchains or network? Uh, personally, I do, I, I believe the bulk of NFTs uh, are, are bound for other networks. Uh, there are some, again, depending on the properties and the type of NFT that you're encoding. Okay. Ethereum, what Ethereum still offers and where the justification for the higher fees on that network come in, uh, at least for now, are in the fact that it is the largest or second largest decentralized network that there is. There are other new startups. They do make it faster, cheaper, and easier. They're perhaps not as secure or distributed in the sense that if they're not bridged to Ethereum, if they're their own blockchain, then their security and their decentralization is only as strong as the nodes that are backing that blockchain. Gotcha. All right. All right, thank you for that. Solana is definitely a good one. Also, look at Matic. Yeah, yeah Matic. I know of Matic as well. <laughs> All right. All right, thank you. Sure. All right. It looks like I, I think we have all the questions that are in the chat. So we can go to last name Burrs. Hi, Hi, tell me your first name. So I don't mess it up. Um, yes, my first name is Ajua. Can you guys hear Ajua. me? We can hear you, Ajua. Go okay, ahead, perfect. you can ask your question. Okay, awesome. Um, I just wanted to know if there are any like downsides or like like high risk areas for NFTs because I'm actually like super interested in it. I'm an artist and I do want to look to like create N NFTs for some of my artwork. So by downsides, could you clarify that a little for me? Um, so maybe like um, any ways, I'm sorry, I'm on mute. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay. So any ways um, that I guess accessing NFTs or like, you know, purchasing or just like the platforms where NFTs are located, any way that it's kind of like difficult for people maybe to to access or kind of just pain points, I guess? So access really isn't an issue. Uh, I, I would 
recommend spending some time figuring out which platform you did want to create and market your NFTs on. Access is not the issue. Visibility is probably the only issue. Uh, we mentioned OpenSeas earlier as the, the largest NFT marketplace. Um, as a new artist and someone just getting in there, depending on the type of art, how, how it's categorized and listed by the platform, you would definitely want to do additional promotion and marketing to draw traffic to it so that it's not number 1 million on the list, you know, that without someone specifically just having the time to browse everything that's available in that particular category and coming across yours, which does happen. If you really are trying to absolutely secure sales, if it's, you know, crucial to you, market, 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 market. Use your social media channels, put some links out there. If um, offered to promote your listing higher in the, the ranks, it, it may be worth it to you to pay an additional fee for higher visibility. But access should not be a problem. It's just now that it's gotten to the level of popularity that it has, uh, standing out, at least initially, until you've established a name in that industry, would be one of the only challenges that I can. Azula, Thank you so what much. type of artist are you? Um, <clears throat> yes, I have done a decent amount of like paintings and drawings. Um, I've also done a little bit of graphic art, but pretty much, yeah. And if you want to get connected with Mr. Um, Cooper, just let me, you can, you know, let me know. I'll put my stuff in the in the chat feature and I'll get you to connect it because you may want to, you know, ask some more questions, okay? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. You're welcome. So with that said, I want to take this time just to really thank everybody for particip for joining us today. We definitely want to thank Mr. Cooper. And again, I just want to thank everybody for joining. Thank everybody who's been here multiple at, uh, for multiple sessions um, for these different workshops. Um, it has been a really great experience, and I really appreciate all of you for just the amazing knowledge that you bring to this table. It makes me feel so hopeful about a future to have so many young people who just seem so darn smart, just so darn intelligent is such a motivation for me. So I thank you. Um, I am very happy. And I also want to thank the Morgan, Tate, the Morgan State University team um, for all that they do. If there's nothing else, feel free to reach out to us. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. We'll let you go back to the amazing work you do. And Pleasure. everybody, um, you have a good day. Awesome. Thank you, everybody.